Hi, for this video, we are going to create a discrete probability distribution. In order to be a probability distribution, the following conditions must be met. Um, the probability of each individual probability of x has to be between 0 and 1 inclusive. So it could be 0 or it could be 1. And the sum of all of our probabilities does have to equal 1. So what we are going to do is we're going to create a probability distribution for the discrete random variable number of siblings. In this case, some people were polled um, and they recorded how many siblings they had. Uh, the number of siblings ranged from 0 to 5 and the frequency is listed down below. I am going to use the TI Inspire to help me find the probability so that I don't have to find each individual data value. If you don't have the TI Inspire to fill in the probability of X column, to fill in this column down here, you would simply take the frequency divided by the sum of all of your frequencies. So you would first add up this column and then divide each of your individual values and then you would put your probability either as a fraction or a decimal. Like I said, I am going to use the Inspire to help me fill this in. So in order to do that, I have to open up a spreadsheet screen. I'm going to name the first column siblings. So I'm just going to write in SIB for siblings. And then I'm going to call the next column the frequency column so that we know that this is a frequency. Whoops, sorry, that was an O. It's kind of hard to see. Um, and then we would just put in our data values into each of these columns. So in the sibling, I would put the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. In the other column, I would put the frequency, so 25, 86, 70, 49, 12, and 8. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to create a third column, and I'm going to use um, the features. I'm going to use the built-in formula feature for this. So I'm going to call this one just the PRB for probability. You can call it whatever you want to. And I'm going to use this line right here where it says equal. So this one that I have left blank for the other two, I'm actually going to put a command in there. And what I'm going to put in there is the frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies. So to use this, I would hit the equals button, which is next to trig. And then I would either type in the variable name or just click on variable. And I'm going to choose the frequency. And then I'm going to divide it by, and the nice thing with this is I can just type the command sum. And then put parentheses and use the variable of the frequency. So what it will do is it will add up the frequency column, and then it will divide each of these individual values by, um, by the sum of the frequencies. In this case, the sum of this column, if I were to add it up beforehand, um, the sum of this column right here is equal to 250, so there were 250 people polled. The reason I know that is because the 49 over 250 does not simplify, so that was the denominator. If you want these as decimals, remember that the Inspire defaults to using exact values, so to change this, we would just go to, sorry, document, and then go to our settings. Um, Sorry, it's very tricky on this. Uh, you would hit the settings and status, which is seven. And we want to go to the document settings. And we're going to go down and we're going to change the calculator mode. Right now it's in auto. I want to change it to approximate. That will automatically turn it into having um, decimal answers instead of fractions. Like I said, it always um, defaults to an exact value. So then I would just simply write these numbers down. So the probability of having zero siblings based on this sample was 0 0.1 or 10%. The probability of having one sibling was 0.344. The probability of having two siblings is 0.28. Uh, three siblings is 0.196. Four is 0 0.048. 
and 0 0.032. What I'm going to do to verify that this really is a probability distribution, that this does add up to 100%, is we're going to take the f and find the sum of the probability of x. And again, I'm going to use the calculator to help me. So if I control I, I'm just going to go to a calculator screen so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to type in again, I'm going to do sum. And then the variable that I want to sum is the probability. And so we see that it does add up to be 1, so both conditions in met are met. All of our probabilities are between 0 and 1, and the sum of the probabilities does add up to be 1. We are now going to create a histogram or a display of this so that we can see what it looks like, um, so we can see what the distribution of this particular data set looks like. So what we would do is we would figure out, I've already set up the scales. Um, I set up down here where this is my random variable down here, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And then the probability based on my sample is based on this, sorry, we'll just ignore that, um, that 10% have 0 siblings, 34.4 percent or 0.34 so I would go up to where I feel 0.34 is have one sibling 28 percent have two nineteen point six have three and again, I'm just approximating on this. Um, in the real world, you'd probably use Excel or something to come up with a much nicer display. Um, we have about 5%, 4.8% have 4, and 3% have 5. So with this distribution, we can see clearly from the distribution that the most common um, number of siblings is one sibling. So that means two kids in the family. Um, followed by two siblings, and the least likely to happen is five siblings. As you go out with more siblings, it does become less common. Um, this distribution, if I described it as far as the center, the shape, and spread, we would say that it would be centered, um, or the median would be between one and two. It would be over here. Um, the mean or the mode would be one. The mean would be pulled up slightly because of the five. It would be a little bit higher than the median. And we would say that this is skewed to the right because our tail goes to the right. Um, the closer the probability of something happening is to zero, the more skewed to the right it's going to be. In this case, it's much more likely to have zero, one, or two, or like we could even say one to three siblings is the most often occurring. Um, but having it set up this way does make it a lot easier for people to see this, again, the probability of x is just the, frequent, the relative frequency distribution, so it's the same as setting up a relative frequency. Um, this only applies to discrete distributions. This is not what you would do for a continuous distribution. You would do something different for that. Uh, hopefully, you were able to figure out how to set up a probability distribution to find the probability of all of your values and create a histogram from the probability distribution. As always, thanks for watching.